Who's got fire on their minds? Well, not arson, but Chris Evans' latest appearance as his infamous 2005 character Johnny Storm. In this marvelous video, we'll focus on the continuity of the F4 comics. Jonathan's journey as a fiery mutate began when the Fantastic Four decided to take the fateful trip into space, aboard a stolen Marvel One rocket. Johnny impulsively decides to join his sister's boyfriend, Reed Richards, on a journey to the planet Spire. The cosmic radiation storm gripped their ship, leaving them with strange powers. Johnny thus became the Human Torch, being in control of his pyrogenesis. Instead of Earth-616, let's explore the various dimensions and their alternate counterparts of the Human Torch. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you, let's begin. Number 1. Jonathan Storm Earth-1610 In this universe, Johnny was as rebellious as his Earth-616 counterpart. Being the youngest son of Franklin Richards, Johnny often felt jaded about the fact that his father's genius hadn't been passed down to him. He spent his youth in the Baxter Building, a government-sanctioned think tank for gifted kids to explore their skills and eventually serve their country. Johnny was present when Reed Richards decided to test run his teleportation device to the end zone, aka the zone that existed beneath their normal universe. But the device backfired as Johnny was sent hurtling all the way to France. When he came to a hospital, Johnny's body was engulfed in flames, but he walked away unscathed. Upon discovering his powers, Johnny fell from the Baxter building and realized that he could take flight while being on fire. Johnny's life on Earth-1610 was a tragic one, as his father passed away and the Fantastic Four disbanded soon after. He went by Johnny Parker when he moved in with May and Peter Parker, along with Gwen Stacy and Bobby Drake. He soon began dating Spider-Woman, aka Earth-1610's Jessica Drew. Johnny Parker Storm also witnessed Spider-Man's death at the hands of the Green Goblin, who'd absorbed his fiery powers and used them to kill Peter. Number 2. Jonathan Storm Earth-311 Let's take it back a couple of centuries. We're talking about Earth-311, in which all our favorite superheroes found themselves in England 400 years in the past. In this alternate world, Jonathan Storm had to flee London after a duel that he bitterly lost. His sister Sue accompanied him, and she ran away from her husband, an unnamed man who she no longer loved. In this timeline, all mutants and mutates were known as witch breeds. The common belief was that all mutants were the offspring of Satan and witches. John and Sue then met Sir Richard Reed, a well-known explorer of this time. They joined Sir Richard on his voyage across the sea aboard his ship named the Fantastic. On their journey, the seafarers encountered a cosmic entity named Anomaly, which led to John's receiving his powers as the Human Torch. The gang was captured by Otto von Doom, aka Otto the Handsome, near the Kingdom of Latveria. But soon the four from the Fantastic were rescued by none other than Sir Nicholas Fury, who swooped in on his hovering witch breed ship. Following this debacle, Jonathan decided to return to the nobility in England, but immediately found himself in Lord Wingfoot's disgrace. In the end, Human Torch began working for the Bard of Avon, William Shakespeare. Number 3. Jim Hammond, Earth-616 The original Human Torch was conceptualized by the genius professor Phineas T. Horton way back in 1939. For his time, Phineas Horton revolutionized the fields of AI and robotics. With these concepts, he created a near-human replica in the form of an android. This android eventually became the Human Torch, and his first public appearance demonstrated his bursting into flame when exposed to the tiniest amount of oxygen. This was due to the android's Horton cells, which were its photoelectric cellular structure, and served as its power source. But these cells were fraught with combustible energy, hence the flames. The Human Torch's creator dealt with an unpredictable explosion of flames by sealing him in cement until he came up with a solution. But even the tiniest air pocket in this cement tomb allowed Human Torch to escape. Unbeknownst to him, Hammond was an extreme danger to everyone around him. During one of his first fights, Hammond realized that nitrogen could be used to gain control over his explosive flames. When he integrated into the world of superheroes, Hammond often butted heads with Namor the Submariner. The android Jim Hammond made for one of the most unique iterations of the Human Torch, given his synthetic physiology, which was made up of carbon polymers. Number 4. Jonathan Storm, Earth-295 A world without Charles Xavier, a world in which Genesis finally ascended. This was the Age of Apocalypse timeline, also known as Earth-295, which was accidentally created by Legion. His recklessness led him back in time and unwittingly allowed Xavier to sacrifice himself to save his friend more than foe, Magneto. The dimensional paradox created was smoothed over by the Imkron Crystal. As the nexus of all realities, the crystal led Earth-616, aka Prime Earth, to go extinct and create an alternate reality of Earth-295. 
But even in this world, intolerance against mutants continued to exist, while Magneto took refuge in the Wondagore Mountain. Apocalypse eagerly planned his return. Near the beginning of the rise of Apocalypse, only two super powerful empires existed on Earth 295. These were Apocalypse, who misrepresented mutant kind, and the Eurasian High Council, backing up humankind. There was an all out war that began on the continent of North America. Three out of four members of the Fantastic Four helped civilians evacuate Manhattan. The city needed to be emptied due to the havoc created by one of Apocalypse's henchmen as he tried to destroy Reed Richards' ship. But in order to protect his carrier, Reed Richards and Jonathan Storm of Earth-295 valiantly sacrificed themselves. Number 5. Johnny Vanguard Storm, Earth-721 In the 70s run of the Fantastic Four comics, Johnny was fated to remain a regular human. His original story of how he became the Human Torch was significantly altered. So there was a such fated journey into space, with no showering of cosmic radiation, and thus no transformation into the Human Torch. These ablaze powers were given to Ben Grimm, who was Prime Earth's The Thing. Earth 721's The Thing was Reed Richards, go figure. As an ordinary human, Johnny Storm decided to enlist and serve his country, but he returned a wounded soldier who was taken in by Archon the Magnificent. This outer dimensional warlord worked with IT scientists who turned an injured Johnny into the Guard, a guardian of realms connecting Prime Earth, Earth 721, and the Fifth Dimension. This sounds pretty noble, but the truth is that Johnny was turned into Archon's puppet as the warlord wished to launch an all out war between these three worlds. The Thing of Earth-721, Reed Richards, enlisted the help of Ben Grimm of Prime Earth to destroy the nexus of realities that Johnny guarded. Their confrontation turned out to be a hockey game, with Grimm and Johnny swinging a puck back and forth in order to get rid of the nexus of the three worlds. Surprisingly, Johnny was then leveled up to become the Vanguard, equipped with the powers to annihilate any reality that he might choose. Number 6. Jonathan Lowell Spencer Storm Earth 982. Also known as MC2, in this alternate timeline, all the major superheroes of Prime Earth occurred 15 years earlier, so the saviors of the world which made up of the age of superheroes had already retired, so to speak. For instance, Spider-Man stepped down from his role after getting his leg blown off in his final fight against the Green Goblin. The Avengers had separated and most likely enjoyed well-earned peace and quiet, living off their retirement funds. Wolverine and Elektra had a child named Rena, who later took up the alias Wild Thing. The Fantastic Four evolved into the Fantastic Five. Superheroes who were known to be young and reckless on Earth-616 had grown up to become seasoned veterans, so the age of superheroes marked by the entry of the Fantastic Four had long passed. One of their members, a young Johnny Torch, was notoriously known for being a hothead and impulsive troublemaker on Earth-616. However, Earth-982 was a whole different picture. Just as the Fantastic Four thrived under Reed Richards' leadership on Prime Earth, a mature Jonathan of MC2 had stepped into responsibility to lead the Fantastic Five. Jonathan Storm, as the Human Torch, had grown into a mature intellectual and was married to Ms. Fantastic, who was a scroll named Leah. Number 7. Jonathan Storm of the Fantastic Five, Earth 772 Everything that went down in this reality was much like our world, but not quite. The point of divergence occurred when Spider-Man requested to join the Fantastic Four, mainly because he was short on money. Thus, the Fantastic Four became the Fantastic Five, with our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man now part of the team. Their first mission as the Fantastic Five was to put an end to the Vulture's troublemaking. Jonathan Storm, as the Human Torch, flew in and deftly scorched the villain's wings away. Johnny, Spidey, Grimm, and Richards took a trip to the moon where they fought off Ivan Kragoff, aka the Red Ghost and his space apes, while Sue remained on Earth to keep an eye on things. She was abducted by Namor, but eventually fell in love with him. This, along with Spider-Man's self-indulgent behavior and refusal to be a team player, led to the Fantastic Five falling apart. Johnny helped Reed falsely lead the UN to overthrow Atlantis in a bid to get Sue back. On Earth-772, a wrathful Jonathan Storm was driven by revenge, which led to the people closest to him getting hurt. Sadly, his redemption arc was short-lived, as Johnny was brutally murdered by Karn, the Master Weaver, for trying to save Spider-Man. Number 8. Jonathan Storm and Namor, Earth-917 Earth-917 was the Fantastic Five's homeworld first portrayed in the 1991 comic What If Number 27, quite similar to the previous reality, but in this one, Namor the Submariner went on to become a member of their team. The story is identical to Fantastic Four Number 15, where Sue was taken hostage by Doctor Doom and was forced to go back in time. Even in this timeline, Sue ended up marrying Namor. Watching his beloved taken away from him and her marriage tore Reed Richards apart, who, in his vulnerable state, fell under Doctor Doom's mind control. The villain ordered a subdued Reed to capture Sue and put up a fierce fight with Namor. 
Reed nearly complied in strangling Sue, but broke through the mind control and realized what he was doing. With his plan foiled, Doctor Doom was driven away by Johnny Torch and the Thing, who had witnessed this mess from a distance. In the end, Reed married Lisette Orlova and had a baby with her, while Sue and Namor also had a child together. The Submariner soon became a part of the team, allying with Jonathan Storm and Ben Grimm on countless missions. Number 9. Jonathan Storm, Earth-912 The cosmic being known as the Silver Surfer was forced to stay on Earth-912 due to Galactus trapping him there. He expressed his desire to join the team, and yet again the Fantastic Four became the Fantastic Five. With the immeasurable strength of the Silver Surfer, the team was able to confront the likes of Doctor Doom, Frightful Four, and Mole Man. But the Fantastic Five soon got entangled with the ruler of Hell, Mephisto, who demanded the Silver Surfer must serve him as his herald. If he refused, his teammates would be mercilessly killed. Mephisto managed to capture the Fantastic Four, torturing them with their worst fears as they slowly headed toward death. Still, the Silver Surfer didn't yield, which resulted in the Human Torch being burned to death. Keeping in mind that Mephisto's Hellfire scorched him alive, unlike the ambient heat energy that Jonathan often controlled. Following this, the remaining members of the Fantastic Four were allowed to return to Earth, and the Silver Surfer gave in. Jonathan Storm was torched for no good reason. Number 10. Jonathan Storm in the House of M, Earth 58163 Created by a grief-stricken Wanda Maximoff, House of M was a significant event that went down in Marvel history. Not only did it involve all of mutant kind, but it also altered reality itself. House of M was a true testament to Wanda's powers, as she created this reality of being with her lost children and fulfilling all her loved ones' wishes. But alas, even in this reality, mutant-human war is preserved, to the point of all mutants going into hiding to save themselves. The fighting took place mainly between Magneto and the Sentinels. During these confrontations, the Sapien Deathmatch armor was created by Tony Stark. Johnny Storm was one of the few who were fated to fight in the infamous Sapien Deathmatch TV show. For this match, Johnny was given a suit of armor that mimicked his flame on ability. Tony Stark decided to help, but the spectators believed that it was actually Jonathan Storm in the Iron Man suit. In the end, the two allied together and saved four million mutant lives against the ongoing human mutant crisis. But this was at the cost of Tony's father, Howard Stark. Number 11. Old Johnny Storm Earth-13266 Earth-13266 was a world conquered by Doctor Doom, after he joined forces with Annihilus and Kang. Soon, however, a swift resistance against this tyranny rose in the form of the remaining Future Foundation, the Fantastic Four, Jean Grey, and Namor the Submariner. Together they planned an attack on Doctor Doom's castle, but Johnny Storm was forced to flee this reality with a horribly disfigured face. He fled through space and time, eventually falling through a wormhole right on Earth-616, specifically the Baxter Building. When Johnny arrives on Prime Earth, he's Old Man Johnny, who helps the Future Foundation prevent Doctor Doom from gaining cataclysmic power that would allow him to control yet another world. In appearance, Old Man Johnny had gray hair, cybernetic enhancements, and a replaced leg. He looked like another seasoned interdimensional warrior, one of Marvel's many. After doing his good deed on Prime Earth, Old Man Johnny set off once again in search of his homeworld. That's when he encountered the Fantastic Four of Earth-616 and helped them restore their original powers. He also sacrificed himself so the heroes of Earth-TRN-379 could defeat Doctor Doom in their world. In Old Man Johnny's honor for his sacrifice, the heroes of Prime Earth organized a celebration and remembrance on the moon. Number 12. Zombie Human Torch Earth-2149 the undead Jonathan Storm first appeared in the comic Ultimate Fantastic Four No. 21 as a zombified human mutant. Earth-2149, also known as the Zombieverse, had the most powerful superheroes riddled with an extraterrestrial infection that turned them into flesh-eating zombies. It was said that an outer dimensional sentry sent by a Watcher brought the virus into this world, and the result was far more nightmarish than an apocalypse. The Fantastic Four discovered the existence of this deadly virus in a tragic way. While the team went about their rounds of the city fighting crime, Sue had ensured the safety of her children, Franklin and Valeria, by keeping them in a secure section of the Baxter building. But upon their return, Johnny discovered that She-Hulk had been afflicted by the zombie virus, and even worse was the fact that she had killed his niece and nephew. Driven mad with grief, Sue Storm proceeded to use a force field to make a zombified She-Hulk's head implode. The team fled under S.H.I.E.L.D.'s protection and managed to approach a secluded Reed Richards, who seemed to be working with a zombified subject. In the blink of an eye, Reed infected them all, revealing himself to be a maniacal zombie scientist as well. A zombie, Johnny Storm, then quickly infected Tony Stark, who tried to put on his suit of armor but was a millisecond too late. Number 13. 
Fantastic Four Movies 2005 Johnny Storm. We have to address the giant dumpster fire in the room. Alright, alright, let's try to give this movie a fair chance. Fantastic Four was a 2005 film produced by 20th Century Fox. The story follows the comics with Reed Richards, played by Yoan Gruffudd, and Ben Grimm, played by Michael Chiklis, being given the green light to access Dr. Victor Von Doom's face station. Here, they sought to study the exposure of clouds made up of cosmic energy and the effect they had on biological samples. Reed was also accompanied by Sue Storm, played by Jessica Alba, and her brother Johnny Storm, played by none other than Chris Evans. After the four braved the storm that gave them their powers, their reputations became the subject of public spectacle. They were named the Fantastic Four, and while the mature members of the team wished to find a solution to reverse their powers, a young Johnny protested. Later in the movie, Dr. Victor Von Doom revealed himself to be Dr. Doom, who then subjected Reed to horrible torture. He forced him to target a heat-seeking missile that would seek Johnny out and effectively kill him. There was a moment in the film when an actual garbage barge was lit on fire to confuse the heat-seeking missile. The question is, why why does this F4 film have the general reputation that it does? Perhaps the Fantastic Four grew as an honorable superhero group in the comics, one of the classics, and the fans had had high expectations for its live action adaptation. Number 14. The Fantastic Four 2015 Jonathan Storm There was an attempted reboot in 2015 starring Michael B. Jordan as the Human Torch. In this version, Reed Richards and Ben Grimm had been working together for years on a collectively designed teleportation device. This invention attracted the attention of the director of the Baxter Foundation, Professor Franklin Storm. He employed Reed and Ben to collaborate with his children, Sue Storm, who was a scientist, and Johnny Storm, who worked as an engineer. As a team, the four were meant to work on a quantum gate together. This was specifically conceptualized by Dr. Victor Von Doom, who was also Franklin Storm's protege. After completion, the team decided to mess around with the device, which took them to a whole new world. Where, you guessed it, they got their superhuman powers. In this iteration, the Fantastic Four were treated like outcasts. Johnny and Sue Storm were given suits that allowed them to control their powers. Reed Richards was lured to Area 51 to reconstruct the Quantum Gate in exchange for a cure for his powers. In the end, when the team came together, embraced their abilities, and defeated Doctor Doom, the Fantastic Four was formed. Even so, Johnny suggested they name themselves the Human Torch and the Torchettes, which would have worked if they were a band or something. Number 15. Deadpool and Wolverine's Cap Johnny Storm 2024 In the latest Deadpool and Wolverine movie that took the MCU by storm, we got the most unexpected appearance. When the two disgraced heroes were sent to the void by the rogue TVA agent, they found themselves face to face with Steve Rogers. Or so we'd hoped for a split second. The last we'd seen of him was in Endgame. Audiences felt a brief but warm rush of nostalgia for a loved phase of the MCU. But this was The Void, an ongoing allegory that hinted at how this place was for forgotten Fox IPs to exist. While Deadpool hoped that the Chris Evans who stood in front of him was actually Captain America, he was proven wrong. With a quick flame on, Chris Evans took flight as his character from the films of the 2000s, The Human Torch. But soon, the three were captured by Cassandra Nova's henchmen, the likes of Toad, Lady Deathstrike, and Pyro to name a few. He also told them who Cassandra Nova was, a megalomaniacal psychotic ass. Okay, the rest's not going to fly on here. But Johnny running his mouth about the evil twin of Charles Xavier was foolishly reckless in the presence of Deadpool. The merc with a mouth did what he was best known for and snitched on the human torch. As Johnny tried to explain himself frantically, Cassandra shut him up by telekinetically skinning him alive. As expected, audience didn't take too kindly to the human torch's disgraceful death. But in classic Deadpool fashion, the fourth wall was broken as we're told that Chris Evans was too expensive to keep around for any longer. Marvelous verdict. So there you have it folks, all the alternate versions of Johnny Storm, a superhero whose powers always matched his temperament. The character has quite a bit of growing up to do, which was proven possible on Earth 982. That being said, the Human Torch hasn't been done justice in any live action adaptations yet, but we can have faith in the upcoming 2025 film, Fantastic Four First Steps. Joseph Quinn has been cast as Johnny Storm. We can only hope that he does justice to the iconic hot-headed character. We'll have to wait and watch. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.